Welcome to Halacha Brura. My name is Rabbi Nachum Chaimowitz. And the topic for today is Hadlakas Nairus. Hadlakat Nerot. Where? Where is the proper place to choose to light the candles before Shabbos? We get together each time in order to clarify the Halacha. Because it's extremely important to do the Halachas precisely. When I was in Yeshiva, I merited to learn from the great sage of the previous generation, Reb Shlomo Volba, of blessed memory. And he taught us the following. Amal mitzvah mechayev diktuk rav. It's necessary to toil and put in effort in order to clarify exactly how to do a mitzvah. When we come to do each mitzvah, we want to do it as precisely as possible. The reason for this is because every time that we do a mitzvah, it affects spiritual realities. We go around and we think, well, I just did this mitzvah. I don't really see anything taking place. So who knows if it had an effect, it didn't have an effect. But clearly, we know that each mitzvah that we do affects spiritual realities. So he taught us that in order to actually bring about the effect on the spiritual level, it's necessary that the mitzvah is done properly and exactly according to its definition in halacha. When we do the halacha, but it's just approximately, it's close, we don't really cause the spiritual effect. And so, for example, we know that the tefillin, the phylacteries that men put on when they daven in the morning, as one of the definitions of the mitzvah, need to be exactly square. When they're formed, they're made in a square form. If a person has tefillin, and unfortunately, they got banged, they were knocked into a wall, and one of the corners was slightly chipped. Well, the person looks at it and he says, okay, it still looks square, but when you look really close, you'll see one of the corners is, is broken or curved. He said, the spiritual effect of tefillin does not take place. Hashem has told us to make the tefillin square, and therefore it's necessary first to fix those tefillin and then put them on. If a person were to put on the tefillin without having them fixed, they'd be doing an act that would look like they're doing the mitzvahs, but it wouldn't really bring down the effect that it has on us spiritually. You know what it's like? It's imagine driving with someone somewhere, and you get into the car, they're about to start, about to start the car to drive. And you're sitting in the back and listening to something. You have earphones on. So you can't really hear what's going on. You see the person sit down, he puts the key into the ignition, and he turns the key. And in your mind, for sure, the car started. In reality, the motor is not really connected to the ignition. And so therefore, what's going on is he's turning the key, but nothing is really lighting up. The car never really started. It's the same thing with mitzvahs. Every time we do a mitzvah, we ignite a spiritual reality. We cause the electricity, so to speak, to flow through the wires of our souls and probably the whole world. But that's all if they're connected properly. That's all if we follow through on the connections by doing the mitzvah precisely. But if we just do it approximately, so you know what that's like? That's like a person who goes into his car, he turns on the ignition, and it's not working. So he goes to the repairman, he says, but I just brought in this car for a fix. Did you fix my ignition? And the repairman says, well, you know, I did the best I could. I connected the wires approximately. It's really close to where it's supposed to be. Okay, but it's not connected. So we want to do the mitzvahs as precisely as possible. When we get together each time, we try to clarify and verify what we're supposed to do practically. Unfortunately, there's a lot of confusion nowadays as far as what is the halacha. Sometimes it's confusing because people didn't have a chance to learn. Sometimes even if they had a chance to learn, they see their different opinions and not sure what to do. Sometimes even after they learned, one person tells them to do this, another person tells them to do that, and then they don't know what to do. So each time we take a little segment of the halacha and we try to clarify as much as possible 
what it is that we're supposed to do. We want to give over, maybe even in the form of bullet points or PowerPoints, what exactly to do. And so the topic for today is Adlokas Neiris. Where? Where is the best place to choose in the home to stand the candles? In order to properly understand this, it's necessary to understand the reasons behind the mitzvah of Adlakas Neiris. We know that lighting of the candles is not a mitzvah from the Torah. It was instituted by the Sanhedrin. The main reason it was instituted by the Sanhedrin, as we know, was to enhance the experience of Shabbos and Yom Tif. Without lighting candles, the experience of Shabbos and Yom Tif would be a whole different experience. According to the Torah, it's enough really, once the day of Shabbos begins, to proclaim words that Shabbos is here, and to refrain from 39 prohibited activities the entire day of Shabbos. So from the Torah, the day of Shabbos might look that a person comes home at the end of his day at work, he walks into the house, he sees it sundown, comes into the house, he says, a good Shabbos to everyone. And by proclaiming the word Shabbos, he could be already fulfilled his obligation from the Torah of mentioning that today is Shabbos. Afterwards, the entire day, it will be fine just to sit and refrain from 39 prohibited activities, but we really wouldn't feel the experience of Shabbos. The experience of Shabbos truly is described in the Zohar. The Zohar HaKadosh says that Shabbos is Yom Adinish It's a day of the soul. It's a whole spiritual experience. There are spiritual realities that really enter our cognizance. And so the rabbi said in the Sanhedrin, that it's appropriate before Shabbos or Yom Tov to light candles in order to be in touch to enhance our experience. But there are three different reasons that they had in mind when this instruction was instituted. The first reason is actually mentioned in the prophets already. The prophet Yeshayahu commands that on Shabbos we should have pleasure. It's necessary to have as much pleasure as possible on Shabbos. Why? Because remember, according to the Torah, it's enough just to sit back and not do what's, what's required. Not do whatever is prohibited. But if we really want to feel the experience of Shabbos, we want to feel what's going on, we have to be happy. Our bodies also have to be in a good place. And so... We have a special command from the prophets to get as much pleasure as possible on the day of Shabbos. Obviously, we're talking about permissible pleasures. But whatever permissible pleasure a person could think of, it's appropriate to practice on Shabbos. And therefore, we sit down and we eat a meal when it comes in Shabbos. It doesn't say anywhere in the Torah that you have to eat a meal on Shabbos. We eat one meal Friday night, we eat another meal Shabbos in the morning. And according to the halacha, we're really obligated to eat three meals on the day of Shabbos. That's all in the reign of pleasure. To have an experience that's pleasurable on the day of Shabbos. And so in that vein, the rabbis of Sanhedrin said, it's an obligation on every Jewish person to light a candle before the Shabbos comes in. Why? In order to enhance pleasure. Because remember, many years ago, there was no electric lights. It was just fire. From the Torah, it's prohibited to light a fire on Shabbos. So a person would have to light something before Shabbos if he wanted any light at night. Let's assume there was something like a lantern in previous years. But, as you can well imagine, if there was no obligation to light a candle, maybe many people would leave on something to burn, but there would be a lot of people who wouldn't. And as the sun sets, and it gets darker and darker. Shabbos descends upon the world. Many people will be sitting in the dark. That, of course, want to fulfill what it says in the prophets, to have a meal. They'd sit down to their meal, and they'd eat their meal as happily as they could. But it would be dark. Said the rabbis of the Sanhedrin, you must light a candle. Why? Because it's a whole different experience when you eat, and you could see what you're eating, than when you just eat the food. There's much more pleasure involved when you could see what you're eating. So that's the first reason for lighting 
Shabbos candles. In order to add to the pleasure of Shabbos at the Shabbos meal. So let's figure this out. Getting back to the original question, where's the best place to light Shabbos candles? According to this reasoning, the best place to choose for Shabbos candles would be on the Shabbos table, right there at your meal. Even though today we have electric lights, but the bright candles add a bright, clearer effect to the whole meal. We enjoy the meal more. So the best place would be on the table. Even if it's problematic for a person to light technically on the table, either because he has children who might knock over the candles, or because he wants to clean up afterwards, and the halacha is, we cannot move the candlesticks once a person lights candles. They cannot be moved through the whole Shabbos. When they're burning, of course they can't be moved, but even after they finish burning, a person cannot remove the candlesticks or candle holders from the table because they're considered muktzah. So therefore, if a person technically cannot put it on the table, best place would be to put it on a table nearby in the same room that can be seen while they eat. So that's according to the first reason. The second reason for Adlakas Neris is also mentioned in the Prophets. The Prophet Yeshayahu says, V'chibadto. You shall give it respect. The days of Shabbos and Yom Tov must be experienced in a respectful way. And that's really the reason that when Shabbos and Yom Tov come, we change into different clothes. We want to act more respectfully to the spirituality of Shabbos and Yom Tov that now descends upon the world. It's also the reason why we cover the tables. Customarily, we cover all the tables, or at least the table that we're eating at, in a tablecloth. We want to do things in a respectful way. And so therefore, this is the second reason why the rabbis of the Sanhedrin said to light the candles before Shabbos comes in. When you eat a meal and there are candles lit, it enhances the quality of the meal. It adds respect and honor to the meal and shows us it's not just a regular everyday supper. And so the second reason for lighting the candles is v'chibadito. You should honor the Shabbos. You should give it respect. Let's go back and figure out, according to that, where would be the best place for the candles? Once again, either on the table, gives respect to the meal, or, assuming a person can, for technical reasons, it would be on some table on the side, nearby, where it can still be viewed while people are eating the meal. There's yet a third reason for instituting Hadlakas Neris. And that reason is to bring about an atmosphere of tranquility and peace in the house. The words used for this in Hebrew are called Shalom Bayis, Shalom Bayit. And even though usually those terms are used to refer to the tranquility between husband and wife, but in this case, it refers to the tranquility between all the occupants of the home. What we're looking for at the Shabbos experience that represents a little bit of the future world, we're looking for an experience of peace and tranquility. We don't want there to be tension. We don't want people to be upset at each other or to get angry, chas v'shalom. So therefore, we light the candles. The nature of a dull, dark, or gloomy room is to bring about gloom. It causes people sometimes extra tension. If a person can't see where they're going, maybe they'll bump into something. Maybe they'll fall off. It's going to cause more tension overall in the house. Said Chazal, you need to light candles before Shabbos and light them in every dull and dingy corner so that your house is filled with light that promotes peace between the occupants, that promotes an atmosphere of tranquility. According to this, where would be the best place for the candles? Really, the best place for the candles would be some corner of the house which is a little dark, which is a little dull. Because then a person might trip over something, a person might, it might not feel so happy, everything is dark in that part of the house. So it's actually better in a certain way, according to this reason, to light the candles in a darker part of the house. 
In practice, we'll go over the three points again. Where is the best place to light Shabbos candles? According to the reason of pleasure on Shabbos, the best place to light Shabbos candles would be on the table or in close proximity to the table where we're having our meal. According to the second reason, that the reason for lighting candles on Shabbos is for respect, out of respect of the meal, out of honor for the Shabbos, best place once again would be on the table or in close proximity to the table where it could be seen. According to the third reason of shalom bayis, peace and tranquility, the best place to light the candle would, would be in some room that it benefits us and lights up an area that previously would have been dark. Now we'll take a practical example. There is certain times that people find themselves in a situation where there's no way that they could put the candles anywhere near the table. What would be such a situation? On sukkahs. On sukkahs, we're required to eat a meal in the sukkah. But the halacha is, if it's a big sukkah, you can light candles in the sukkah. If it's a small sukkah, don't light candles in the sukkah. You must light candles outside if it's a small sukkah. We all know that a sukkah, the schach, is made of flammable material. Be very careful and cautious before deciding to light the candles in your sukkah if it's a very small one. Obviously, if it's large enough, it's as large as a room, then the best place to light the candles would be on the table, like the whole year. But if you have a very small sukkah, it's necessary to light the candles in the home. Choose a place in the home that will add benefit, that will be of use to someone, that will add brightness and clarity, clearness to the experience of Shabbos. Because if the candles are lit in a place that they add no benefit whatsoever, a person would not have fulfilled their obligation. Just to light the candles and not receive any benefit from them would not fulfill our obligation. So therefore, if a person is either at the time of sukkahs and he can't light next to the table, or maybe there's a situation where people went away and the room is full of tables and everyone's eating and there's just no place in the room that they're eating to light candles, choose a place in the home that the candles will add some sort of benefit. In the bedroom, obviously, we're not looking that it should be lit. But right outside, in the corridors, in other rooms, choose a place where the candles are of benefit. Many Jewish people today fulfill this aspect that even though they try optimally to light the candles near the table, they'll turn on a light near one of the bedrooms, a hall light, a bathroom light, so that the light shines in a little bit into the rooms and no one trips over anything. This is part of the obligation of lighting candles before Shabbos. We need to benefit from the candles and light up dark and gloomy areas. If there's a situation and a person receives no benefit whatsoever, it would be necessary to go to that place where the candles are and receive benefit in order to fulfill one's obligation. I was once in a situation on Shabbos that was a very temporary situation. It was a, a set-up situation for a Shabbaton. And there was actually, the candles were not in the actual room where people ate. And the person running the Shabbos had set aside a certain room that all the women should go to before Shabbos and light their candles. As it turned out, the room that was on the side, it was a maintenance room, it was on a different floor. And it became pretty clear that those candles were not of much benefit to anyone. So while it seems that we're fulfilling the obligation by just going and lighting candles, that's not really the full obligation. We need to benefit from the candles. In such a case, it would be necessary from one participant from the family, one person from the family to actually go downstairs to the candles once it gets dark, take a chair, sit, and benefit for the candle, from the candles. Even for a few, even for a very short while, in order to fulfill one's obligation. And so, therefore, it's always necessary to figure out will I have benefit from the candles? On a practical level, an important word of advice is that if a woman is lighting candles and then afterwards going away, she's going to someone else's house to eat, and it doesn't seem like there's going to be much benefit from the candles. It's necessary in that case to light very long candles 
so that by the time she comes back from eating at the person's house, Friday, the candles will still be lit. Or, vice versa, she could stay until it starts to get a little dark, benefit from the candles, and then go. There must be some sort of benefit from the candles in order to be Yodse. The same thing takes place on the day of Yom Kippur. On the day of Yom Kippur, many people light, and then we go to shul for many hours. It's important to light long candles in order to benefit from the candles. So again, to review what we learned today, Hadlakas Neiris, where? Where is the best place? According to reason number one for Hadlakas Neiris, having pleasure on Shabbos, the best place for the candles, if possible, would be either on the Shabbos table or on a side table in close proximity of the table where the meal is eaten. According to the second reason, that it's because of honor and respect for the Shabbos, v'chibadatoy, covered Shabbos, the best place would be to have the candles once again on the table or in close proximity. According to the third reason, for shalom bayis, for a tranquil and peaceful atmosphere, a person could light the candles anywhere in the house where they shed light and bring positivity and light to a dark or gloomy area of the home. May God help and we be able to fulfill this mitzvah in its right place, in its right time, with the right intent. And in that merit, may our mitzvahs and small actions that we do down here ignite the spiritual realities above and bring down that experience of a Yom Adonishmasa, a day of the soul, a day of closeness to God for each and every one of us in our upcoming Shabbos and Yom Tov.